what we really think is the core thing that makes the communities we're doing is the markets we're in. So kind of from day one, there's been a fundamental bet on the continued growth of Sunbelt markets, so Southeast and Southwest. And as you look at then what is going to be, you know, drive preference and drive premium, it's, it's sort of the diversity of uses, the lifestyle that you're able to create particular think about where people are coming from and what their expectations have been and where migration patterns are coming from. That mix of use, whether it's sort of blared mixed uses or sort of horizontal multi-use products, it's a requirement. You need to provide a lifestyle experience. As long as you can do it in an economical fashion, that's what drives absorption. That's what drives premium, which ultimately makes it a, you know, a good economic decision. I think there, there's been a little bit of a misconception about what the suburbs are and aren't, and I think the character of the suburbs are changing. There's an increased sort of sophistication in terms of consumer tastes, where they're expecting more. And the, the sort of rigid segregation of product, not just mixed use product, but even sort of product types and from a housing perspective, people are looking to see something that's a little bit more interesting. So it's put a lot of pressure on developers who really want to create the preferred communities to be a bit more thoughtful on that front. So a key piece of what we've been doing is really digging into consumer preferences, understanding how sort of from a, a psychographic perspective, different people want different things and then be very intelligent intentional about designing communities that will respond not just to sort of income or life stage based requirements, but also lifestyle based requirements. There are folks out there that very much want sort of that bucolic sort of in the country kind of experience. And there are those that really don't want to lose the cultural engagement that they got from the cities. There's opportunities for both kind of communities. And we're trying to be very thoughtful about when you do one versus the other. And you know, there's 20 other flavors in the middle. But in terms of what we're doing from a demographic perspective, we're trying to make sure that we're building in markets where there's enough concentration of people who can't you know have the income to afford it but one of the things we've really seen as we did our lifestyle and psychographic study is that a lot of those preferences cut across traditional demographic markers whether it's the millennial versus the baby boomer whether it's the ethnicity driven issues really a lot of those things are more common than you would think so it's not ignoring demographics but we'd say sort of demographics is not the you can't look at something just from that perspective. The, one of the bigger challenges right now is just land prices. That, that is a fundamental driver that's impacting affordability that all developers are struggling to figure out what, you know, <laughs> how do you fix that? And there is no real fix when underlying land values are high. I think the markets we're in, relatively speaking, are more affordable than, than you know, sort of the global gateway cities, which is what we think is sort of a fundamental advantage we have. And it's part of the reason you're seeing job growth and population growth in those markets. But on a relative basis, land prices have gone up. And so it does push you to do or maybe a little more high rise development where you need to get more density on the site to kind of justify the underlying land cost. So you're seeing some of that stuff start to happen or greater density even in a more suburban context where you're doing more shared wall housing, not just sort of detached. So 2016 is going to be a, a busy, busy year. The strategy in terms of kind of high growth uh, markets across the southeast and southwest continue to play out well. And then the multifamily space, the, the same kind of rigorous focus on great locations continues to be a key part of what we're doing. So you'll see us in the same markets where the last round of communities that uh, transacted last year, um, same, same basic markets and continuing to look for those A plus locations. So in terms of any expansion, you might see us start to be active again in the DC market. Austin's another market that we've kind of been in and out of. We're very active in the single family space and really growing pretty pretty aggressively in Charlotte. So really looking at mix of use. It's been a kind of a hallmark of some of our multifamily communities, but we're starting to look for opportunities where we can do that at greater scale and adding some commercial office uses to, to sort of the product mix of what we're doing.